So it's New Zealand to bat first. In rather chilly conditions at Lancaster Park on this autumn morning, the temperature only about 9 or 10 degrees as uh, play begins, but it's expected to uh, reach the 20s as uh, the day progresses and the northwesterly wind gets up. So New Zealand batting first after being centre to bat. Great Batch and Latham to open up for New Zealand. And the opening bowlers for Pakistan, Wazi Makram and young Akib Javid. Yeah. Oh, what a good shot. Imran Khan, oh. A rather elderly boot, left boot for Imran Khan. Good shot that, very good shot by Great Bat. He's going away from four, that was a fine stroke. He played it so well, moving inside the line, playing it late, keep turning it round with his wrists for the day's first boundary. Yes, this is one of the difficulties that bowlers have bowling to left and right hand. As that nipped away, would have been a good delivery to the right hander. But quite a comfortable shot there for Great Batch, tickling it around the corner and fine leg, far too wide to stop that boundary. Seven for no wicket. So remember, on One World of Sport, it's going to be cricket almost non-stop now through until half past midnight. Oh, there we are. That's Great Batch in Excelsis. A splendid stroke over square leg, four runs, and that's the one that sets the lads a cheering. Look at them. Marvellous. Yes, well, this hits it into his pads again, and the shot's very much on. Although, no, he fetched it from off stump, as a matter of fact. So the length, he was playing the length rather than the line, but picked it up very efficiently, and always going to be four. Akib to Great Batch. It's now 17 for no wicket. Well, well, well. And just angling into him, he got his foot across and whipped it over long on, and it was always going to be six. Now, that's a fine shot. He has to make sure the ball's close enough to him, though, otherwise he could leave that gate for it to go through between bat and pad. So the skill required from someone like Great Batch, who's looking to get after it, is that the ball must be close to him when he goes over the top. joined in. What a marvellous stroke. Well, Akram decides to go around the wicket here. And once again, it's wide. It was a little in the air, but that fielder at point is a little, a little deeper than is normal, or with the new ball anyway, that one tends to go deeper there, square of the wicket. And that was a fine shot too from Latham. Oh, it's in the air, he's out, he's gone. Latham looks at the pitch, in fact, he might look at his own judgment. It was a poor stroke, that ball didn't do a great deal, and it was very comfortably picked up at first slip. So New Zealand have lost their first wicket in the fourth over. Yes, if you're going to dabble at these, you really must get across and get on top of the ball. And here he is trying to run it down there. Always risky against the new ball with a bounce such as that. And so New Zealand lose their first wicket in the fourth over, 23 for one. On the jump, they go for the single, that hits his own, I would think no. Umpire Bucknell was absolutely watching intently, and he just made his ground. But that was, uh, would have been unfortunate had he been out, because the short, the close fielder got in the way. Yes, he did. He was impeded with his progress here, running through Mark Greatbatch. See the fielder coming in there, and he had to just slow down. But it was a good decision, he was just in. Trouble, trouble here. And he gets back. Well, Mark Greatbatch came a long way down. The Pakistanis were a bit slow to react. Martin Crow had no intention of going. Let's have another look at it. Yes, well, Martin Crow wasn't interested at all. In fact, he put his hand up. Greatbatch had come a long way down the wicket, did well to turn round and get back. Very wide on the crease, but good shot from Greatbatch. He stands high and hits it away square on the offside, off the back foot. And that just raced away. My word, this outfield is quick. Yes, well, that ball just sort of sat up, and it was very uppish. And had that man at point been just a little more backward, that could easily have been a chance. But uh, still, it's gone very, very quickly, as you say, Mystery, uh, for four runs. Oh, he's gone over the top this time, through backward point. It's safe out there, one bounce, four.
Yes, uh, a typical one-day shot by a great batch. Uh, that one delivered short and lifting, and great batch right in position, playing it on top of point, uh, straight to the fence. Well, that's not a good shot from great batch, but he's going to be a bit lucky, and he'll get some runs now. The outfield's pretty quick. It might go all the way. Akib is racing. And there's the 50 for New Zealand in the 12th over. New Zealand's brought up its 50, but has lost three wickets on the way. Oh, that's a fine stroke. Four runs. That's a marvellous shot. That's great bat back on song. He hit that beautifully. Not much bat tip, but whack. He had a little bit of width, and it was short. Yes, he used the pace of the ball. He got over the top of this one. The previous ones had gone in the air. But that really is a good shot. He got side on and clipped it behind point. Well, he got away with it, great batch. He swept, I think, a little bit iff iffily. Didn't really know which way it was spinning. And he's got a couple of runs down to fine leg, very fine leg. And it's leg buys. And they're going for an overthrow. And that could well have been run out. It's rather cheeky. So they got an added one there from the leg buys. for chasing a wide one. He's got himself a single, but Moen Khan certainly had a chance to make it four down for New Zealand. Well, you're an old wicketkeeper, Warren Lees, or a former wicketkeeper. Thanks very much. <laughs> What'd you think of his technique there? Yeah, that was not a great effort. I don't think that was a particularly hard catch, and he should have perhaps been, uh, he didn't move his feet at all. Try to catch him one glove for a start. Yeah, he made a mess of it. Good running. And in fact, they're going to get some bonus runs here. This will run away for four overthrows. Rummy's Raja has no chance of stopping that. So the corner's leg buys, and Steve Buckner will signal four plus the one they took originally. So it's five in total. 73 for three. Warren Lees, thanks very much for uh, your comments this morning. More later. 73 for three after 17. And the leg spinner, Mushta. Oh, over pitching driven, great shot. But only one because there's a man out there. Yes, that was a very good shot by Kenny Rutherford using his feet coming down the pitch a little bit wide, over tossed, and just as well that sweeper was out there because that would have been a certain four. Loud appeal from Imran. No one else uh, shows much interest, including Steve Bucknell. And that would look to be missing leg by a long way. That's the end of the over. 83 for three. Yes! Oh, Where's Ken Rutherford. Ah! He's, He's given him. Yes, sent back. Ken Rutherford, run out. I don't think there's too much doubt about that. Tragedy for New Zealand. As Mark Greatbatch decided he didn't want the run. Certainly a waste. Rutherford walking, coming down the track, running on the shot. Akram, the left-hander, picking that ball up very quickly. As you can see, Rutherford a good two metres out. And that's a disaster for New Zealand and good for Australia too, I'd suggest, at the moment. 85 for four, New Zealand. And there's a little bit of confusion there, but it's a, a safe single at the end of the day. So that's the end of the Imran Khan over, 87 for four. Oh, he's gone, he must be stumped, surely, he is. Leaping to wide, it's a wide as well, but of course you can be out with a wide. Well, oh, dear me. That's worth one run, it's a wicket, it's an extra ball, and Harris unfortunately has been stumped on one. Well stumped by Moen, mm. well tossed up too by Mushtag. He certainly went after this ball as you see very wide and far down the wicket was uh, Chris Harris and there was no question about that yes well it was up there to be hit but it was the the googly wasn't it it just kept going further away and he got done yeah. in the air and with the spin so Harris is out New Zealand lose their fifth wicket 88 for five and that's out that'll be out the top edge just around the corner and looking to sweep, paddling it round there. And great batches on his way. 
He's out for 42, and New Zealand lose their sixth wicket at 93. Just looking to paddle it here, just a little top edge. And Salim Malik took a very, very simple catch indeed. So New Zealand 93 for six in the 24. He's bowled him. Smith looking to cut Imran with that angle wide of the crease, angling the ball in and nip nipping back as well. And at the end, Smith was just too tucked up and chopped it onto his stumps. And New Zealand use, lose their seventh. That was a good delivery by Imran in coming to the batsman and uh, Smith on the back foot just got an inside edge uh, with that delivery on his leg stumps and he walks back to the pavilion after having made only one. 96 for seven New Zealand. Five inside the ring to Patel. And he'll sprint through, just put pressure on the fielder but not able to come back for two. And the 100 has eventually arrived for New Zealand after 26 overs. But the critical thing, of course, is that New Zealand are seven down with just Patel and Larson at the crease with Morrison and Watson to follow. Well, that's a very good shot, Dan. A very good shot indeed by Larson. It's going to be in four runs. Played it very well into the gap. It was a half volley. He did good with it. Yes, well, he let this one come on nicely, got over the top of it and clipped it through just wide of mid-on, between mid-on and mid-wicket. Good positioning of his feet there and finding the middle of the bat. Just look how he got outside the line of it there, rolled his wrists on it and clipped it beautifully through the onside. And that is out. It was a marvellous catch there in the covers. It was very low and... Uh, Patel did not get over that one. He just hit it in the air, a skimming catch, and Mushtaq took it absolutely brilliantly, low down in front of him. A fine catch. Yes, it almost happened in slow motion, didn't it? But this was a fine catch. The shot was always on, but he fell away and hit the ball in the air, and look at that. Just at grass height, and a great catch from Mushtaq Ahmed. What a day he's having. So New Zealand now are 106 for eight. Oh, a beautiful stroke. That was a marvellous shot there by Larson. And, I mean, no one, Martin Crowe, couldn't have hit a colour drive better than that. Well, who knows? New Zealand could get a plus out of this uh, day after all if Larson can continue to play shots such as that. And that's really a good shot indeed. Oh, an appeal for a stumping, but uh, umpire Steve Bucknor says no. Danny Morrison being beaten. Yes, he just pushed out at that ball there, and that's very, very Ooh. tight indeed, isn't it? There's a question of whether he had his foot in the air as the bales came off. Very, very tight decision indeed. Yes, that looks uh, as if it may just have been out. Uh, we'll have another look at it. Watch that back, back foot. Says Danny Morrison. 
142 for eight. Amir to continue from the southern end. And that's a fine looking shot from Gavin Larson. He didn't clear the bowler by too much, but it's gone away for four, hit very straight. You know, these two are doing a, an important job for New Zealand because frustration is beginning to show in the park, with the, among the Pakistanis now, and frustration can lead down many a blind alley. Oh, bad ball. Cut by Larson. He won't get four, but he'll certainly get two. Haki, lovely arm, hasn't he? So the end of the over, 149 for eight. Wazim Akram, yep. left arm, into the attack again, and Gavin Larson immediately picks up a single. And there's the 150 for New Zealand. It's been a bit of a battle. They've lost eight wickets, uh, but at one stage it certainly didn't look like New Zealand was going to get even this. Oh, charging here and ended up chipping it. They're looking for two. There's hesitations, and Willie Watson, if it had hit, he could well have been struggling. But they decided to take the risk and come back for a second so that Larson could stay on strike. But that was a charging chip towards the vacant mid-off. Very disappointing for New Zealand through the middle order. Mark Greatbatch making a fine 42 from 67 deliveries, an explosive start, but then he struggled once the leg spinner came on. Latham Jones, Crow, Rutherford, Harris, Patel and Smith well, none of them reached double figures. Very disappointing through that middle and lower order. And then Gavin Larson coming together to make his best score by far in one-day international cricket. 37 from 80 deliveries. Danny Morrison was involved in a useful partnership for him, uh, with him rather, which saw the score go from 106 to 150. And then Willie Watson hung around for a few more runs to be added at the end. 166 there, New Zealand all out in the 49th over. Wazi Makram, 4 for 32, finished up with uh, the best figures in terms of the number of wickets taken. But so much uh, influence on that New Zealand innings was achieved by the leg spinner Mushtaq Ahmed. Uh, bowling leg spinners, but also with a fair proportion of googlies or wrongins, the ones that went the other way. And he really bamboozled the New Zealand middle order. So 2 for 18 for Ahmed. Great support from uh, Javid, uh, Akib Javid Imran from Amir Sohail and Ijaz Ahmed had the one over towards the end. As Danny Morrison with the new ball, about to bowl to Amir Sahal. Coming round the wicket. Oh, he's hooked, it's in the air. Could be out. out. He is he's out. out. First ball. ball. And Danny Morrison in has fact, got it's a no ball call. No, no, Amir is standing there, waiting or looking for the no ball to be called by the point umpire. It was Steve Randall who's made no decision at all, so Amir is out. Yes, no question about it. There is no movement there. He was hoping for no ball because of the fact it was a bouncer, but uh, he's on his way. First and he doesn't ball. want to go. No, he's very he slow. He doesn't want to go. <laughs> well, what a sensational start to this bowling innings and the Pakistanis have lost their first wicket with the first delivery of the innings. Well, we're going to look at the height here and I think he had every reason to believe that it was too short and should have been called a no ball. Well, of course, the rule is that if it goes above shoulder height, uh, but umpire Steve Randall says, no, it didn't, you're out, and Pakistan are uh, one for none. He's hooked again. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, another bouncer. And my word, he hit that well. Yes, he did. And uh, that just behind square got onto it very quickly. Well, he protected his head just a little bit as well. Not surprised because he had missed. Might have gone onto the helmet. But uh, my word, that went very quickly behind the square. No one was ever going to stop that one. and Danny Morrison has struck again. Inzamal Huck is bold. Yes, well, he got an absolute beauty. That one sort of nip back. I think he played it on too. Got a bit of inside edge. And really, he was caught on the crease in no man's land. Just came back inside edge onto his stumps. He's gone. He's out for five. Pakistan are now two for nine in the third over. Well, Danny Morrison reminding him of where he's uh, headed. Inzamal will hook on his way. Pakistan, nine for two. And good 
looking shot. He's got it through. And that'll go away for four. Well timed by Ramiz. Well, the Pakistanis are very strong on their legs, as with a lot of teams like the Australians. But uh, drift too straight, and the ball is going to get whipped through there quite readily. Full delivery driven. Good looking shot by Ramiz, and that'll run away for another four. Martin Crowe just jogging after it. So. Well played by Ramiz. Well, that was a very good shot because that ball was outside the off stump, and even though it was full, a roll of the wrist and pushed it through the onside there. Really, that ball could have easily have gone through the offside, through covers even. Nine overs gone. Patel to continue. Wide half volley, and Patel diving across and making a very good stop. I would suggest that was hit into the ground. And we'll see on the replay that that was probably the case. Yes, so that would be right in there. And yeah, that drive. Uh, one tries, uh, Patel tries to catch that one. I don't think it was one bounce in there. It no, it wasn't. You, no, absolutely. That was a chance. So me and Dad, a real life there. Patel appeared to have hold of the ball in his hand. And then it came out as he yes, tumbled. Indeed, a lucky escape for me, Dad. Yeah. He's uh, tried to ball, uh, drive that ball uppishly, and Patel diving to his left, just fumbled with the ball and dropped it uh, to his disappointment. Well, did he get a touch on that, the way that Patel went up? But what a shot it was from me and Dad. He tried to reverse lap it so early in his innings. Me and Dad in desperation, a reverse sweep, which might have uh, touched his uh, leg guard or maybe inside edge of his bat. Sweeping from outside off stump. Oh, a poor piece of fielding here from uh, Gavin Larson. And there's two runs. This went clean through his hands. Oh, he's put it away over mid wicket from outside off stump between the two deep fielders. It'll race away for four. Long on, not able to get around Latham. And nor the man, very much squarer than that. So Rami's Raja picks up a boundary from the shot. Yes, flighted one and uh, just playing across the line of that delivery. Uh, very well struck, well timed and uh, through the mid-wicket region. No fielder there. There's a big gap between deep mid-wicket and long arm. In the air, but it was firm enough to go straight down the ground. That'll go all the way for four. For a moment there, it looked as though it was going to be hit back to Willie Watson, but always on the onside. And a boundary. This magnificently is struck by uh, Ramiz Raja. The ball foot pitch, full, full pitched by Willie Watson. And Ramiz Raja right on top of that, uh, going down the wicket, driving it past mid on. Oh, reverse lapping it, and this could well go for four, at least three. Certainly Jones will be hoping it goes all the way. But no, he's managed to just drag it in. And that's three to me and dad. And so the Pakistani 50 is up, 51 for two in the 20th over. Oh, that really uh, climbed on me and dad, and he ducked for cover, just pushing it away. In the end, it went safely down to fine leg. And is Steve Randall called a no ball? Yes, he has to that one. That's amazing, isn't yeah, it, after his earlier done performance? He exactly the same thing to uh, Amir earlier on, but uh, short ball, fair decision. Came off the fair gloves. Decision. Amir right. taking evasive action there, really. Good delivery, but it's going to cost New Zealand a run or an extra ball as well. Trying to pull it away, he does well, and he's beaten the man at mid-on. That should run away, it's struggling towards the boundary, but Ken Rutherford just jogs after it. Well, Ramiz in the last over to Morrison tried to pull in three times unsuccessfully. And with Larson being a little bit of a lot slower on pace, had more time to connect and play that shot and got it through wide mid on for four. Oh, he's nicked it, but he's nicked it fine. And that'll run away for four. No slip in, of course, so it's fair enough. Going to cut, getting a top edge. And running down to the boundary for four. Yes, well, that ball was wide. It didn't really move or 
at all into the batsman and so me and dad had plenty of time plenty of room to just sort of get a, a little bit of bat on it and that's enough oh fine looking shot that should run away for four in fact it does Gavin Larson coming around can't cut it off so good square cut Rummy's Raja yes a bit of a gimme here not too full in length, but enough width for him to slash it behind point. Good shot there from Remy's Raja. Over the top he goes as Rod Latham comes into the attack, and that'll run away for four to the point boundary. And it does look like the Pakistanis are going after it. We've had reassurances here that uh, it won't rain from the locals. We've heard that story before. Yes, this is wide, and Ramiz, although not getting to the pitch of it, he knew if he hit through the line, there was every chance of it clearing the inner ring. It does show how unfair the system is. Well, this could be a run out. He's dropped the ball. Gavin Larson at the bowler's end went to the stumps. The throw came in, it was going, but in the end, he couldn't hang on to it. Yes, I think this was uh, such a poor throw here from Harris. It pitched just in front. A very difficult one indeed for Larson to take. And there's the 100 up for Pakistan. Javed Meandad getting it down to third man. And 100 for Pakistan. They've lost two wickets, but they've got things pretty well under control. Oh, good looking shot from me and Dad. Off the back foot, clipped away into the offside. Pretty square of the wicket for four runs. Into the over, 105 for two. And once again, Ramiz Raja goes for the big shot through the onside. And for the first time against Morrison, he gets that one through. That's the third time he's tried the shot to a short ball. And the first time it's pierced the field. Yes, uh, Ramiz Raja, as I said earlier, is a good hooker and a puller of the ball. That delivery, very short from Danny Morrison and uh, Ramiz Raja, right behind that uh, delivery, uh, gets on top of it and pulls it uh, fiercely towards mid-wicket for four. I mean, it hits well through mid-wicket. They're comfortable now. They didn't even really scuttle through for what might have been three if they'd really put the pressure on. with Pakistan at 124, now for three. Javed Dad is out, OBW to Morrison for 30. 124 for three, Morrison's got all three. Yes, from right of the stems, Danny Morrison, ball slightly short and Mehta playing across, misses the line of that delivery, hit on the pad, and uh, Steve Randall, the Australian umpire, raises his figure to give him out. Mehta missed 30 in 85 balls, 122 minutes. So 124 for three with me and Dad leaving in the 36th day. And that's gone for four. Hit with marvellous timing and great placement. There was a man at backwards square leg, Willie Watson. He really had no chance as that one just raced away to the boundary down there. Morrison drifting down the leg side here and just look at that, helping it on its way. go where he wanted it to he was just uh, swinging at that one he hooked it round or hooked it round I should say onto the onside picks up two in the end and really Rummy's Raja has got a little loose here I was interested to hear the New Zealand coach Warren Lee say that um, he was disappointed with the approach and perhaps the attitude of one or two of his players particularly the batsman mm. in this match so he's obviously taken a, a hard line towards it which means that one or two players are gonna have to wake themselves up very quickly before they turn it on for the next game Oh, good shot. Clipped that one away. He's picked it up and hit it outside the circle, and that's four runs from the moment it left the bat. Good shot. Rummy's Raja. He might come back for his hundred. In fact, he's turning for two, so Rummy's Raja, 100 runs. Fine effort from him. He really has stabilised this Pakistan innings. He lost a couple of partners early. 
In fact, he up, lost his opening partner on the very first ball of the innings, but he's held the ship together, and he's now on 100. And just flicking this down. That'll go for four. It's fine enough. That won't be cut off. Latham drifting down the onside, and Pakistan go to 149 for three in the 42nd. That's that delivery on the leg stump, and Ramiz Raja, with a flick of the wrist, turns that ball towards the long leg boundary for four. Full toss, and that's an easy gimme down the leg side. Rutherford just lollipopping that one just outside leg stump and just a gimme there, four runs. Yes, uh, Ramiz Raja continues to flay the bowlers. Uh, superb innings, considering that Pakistan had lost two early wickets uh, in the morning. Full half ollie and smashed through the covers. It's a fine shot. And the end of the over, 163 for three, Pakistan. Almost hitting through this one. Trying to hit it through the offside and ending up down at uh, long on or mid on. All credit to, to Pakistan, Glenn, for taking up a team which was unbeatable in this World Cup so far. Yes, well, certainly no sides unbeatable, but you're, you're, you're right. They have broken the winning streak of New Zealand. Charging and then just checking the shot. Ramiz Raja. And he is on 115, scored from 154 balls. Fifteen superbly is struck for us. And he's whacked this one all oh, just wide of mid on. Just wide of mid on. That's to the boundary, and that will give Pakistan the victory that they need to get through to 167 for three in the 45th over. And Ramiz Raja not out 119. Salim Malik not out nine. Pakistan winning this contest at Lancaster Park in Christchurch and breaking the winning run of New Zealand, giving them a marvellous chance now of going through to the semi-finals. Pakistan in the end doing it very easily. A loss of a couple of wickets early on did not affect them, even though Javed Mehendad struggled, but it was Ramiz Raja, 119 not out, the highest individual score of this World Cup that in the end was responsible for Pakistan getting to that target of 167 with uh, two balls still left in the 45th over. So a very comfortable and most deserved win for Pakistan, even though they lost a couple of early wickets. For New Zealand, Danny Morrison took three for 42 and was the most successful bowler, reasonably economical as well, even in the context of this game. Deepak Patel, none for 25. He was very tidy again, opening the bowling and bowling straight through. Willie Watson did a good enough job, but really the other New Zealand bowlers today were uh, not really on song and uh, Pakistan very convincing winners. So Pakistan have gone to nine points and they now have a chance of making the last four. What they certainly have done is knock Australia out of contention for a place in the semi-finals. What do you have to say about uh, today? Because I guess the figures tell the, tell the story of the match really, don't they? Sure, you know, we didn't get enough runs. And that was a bit disappointing really, but uh, Pakistan came out uh, and had a crack at us and um, had a bit of luck early on. Bowled very well and kept the pressure on and uh, 166 wasn't good enough. And that leg spinner seemed to cause the odd problem or two out there? Well, I mean, he, he came on at a good time because Pakistan had just got two quick wickets and, uh, and therefore we couldn't afford to lose another. So we really had to just uh, work it around if we could and he, he didn't give us any bad balls. So he deserved, uh, I think he met man of the match, was he? He deserved it because he, um, he bowled brilliantly for 10 overs. Mm. All right, so as far as the batting was concerned, not enough runs, but I suppose you thought during the lunch break, some early wickets and we might be with a chance here if we can yeah. if we score 166 all out they might be able to score 165 all out well that's right yeah. i mean yeah. we had to get probably about three or four wickets in the first uh, 15 overs um, and two early ones with danny bowling so well um, we had a little a little sniff and then that um great attempt by dipak caught and bowled off javid i mean three for 30 we we you know probably still would have been out of it at that stage because 160 is not far away but we, uh, we showed some good attitude out there. We know we let ourselves down with the bat, but we came back out and uh, fielded and bowled okay. 
Do you think that a victory, a, a victory to Pakistan, a result such as today, might in some respects be um, a timely reminder of, of, of things or not? Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose um, we played the way people expe expected us to play in this World Cup. Um, <laughs> Come on, that's... Uh, but, yeah, well, you know, I mean, so, yeah, it's a, it's a good... Uh, it'll sting us back into action, that's for sure. Uh, there's no problem lifting the guys um, from this point on. And um, I, I think at the end of the day, Pakistan wanted to win just that little bit more. The silver lining is that there's no chance of Australia getting to uh, uh, the semis now, so you've definitely got a, got a home draw in the semis, so that's something, I suppose. Now, Absolutely. Yeah. Who, who would you prefer? I, I know the question's been asked yeah. many times before, but now it's down to two teams, isn't it? Pakistan and West Indies. Yes, it is. Um, well, I mean, we, we would probably prefer to play South Africa, which means that uh, West Indies win would... Um, if would, West Indies would, win tonight, yeah, their run rate would be they better. They would go to third, yeah. and, and yeah. South Africa would be in fourth spot. So that would be preferable, but... You know, I still think we're playing well, um, you know, apart from today, and uh, we're confident against anyone we come up against. We're, we're very happy to be at Eden Park, though. Absolutely. Martin Crowe, thanks for talking to okay. us, and we'll thanks see you on Saturday. Yeah. All right. Well, really, here at Lancaster Park today, there's only been one team in it. Pakistan bowled and batted much better than the New Zealand side did, and the New Zealand team, which had been so successful in its first seven matches of this uh, Benson and Hedges World Cup, rather came down to earth with a thumb today. I'm sure they will uh, not mind that. It'll bring them back to uh, some sort of reality before they go into a very tough semi-final encounter in a few days' time now at Eden Park in Auckland. One thing today's result has ensured is that New Zealand will have a home draw in the semi-final. Australia are out of the last four. Pakistan still have a chance of getting to the semi-finals of the Spencer and Hedges World Cup. That's it from uh, Lancaster Park in Christchurch. A win to Pakistan over New Zealand by seven wickets.